Hi, I'm Julia and this is my shed. So today's little project is um, I'm sort of dipping my toe into CNC. So a friend has um, basically let me have this on sale or return because <laughs> he's got two of them. Um, so it's a um, Roland uh, MDX 15, I think it is. Roland at MDX 15, which is like a, a bench top engraver um, stroke milling machine. Um, this is very, very sturdy Z axis compared to the, um, the, the 3018s, which I, I also have, but I've not, not, not actually used it. The 3018, you can wobble the the z-axis quite a lot so um, anyway today today's job is that the spindle is bored out six mil for cutters I'll bring you in closer so we can have a closer look at the the spindle yep so as you, as you can see this this is um, an FC3 cutter um, which fits in really well actually because you've got a, a grub screw to hold it in place so if I, uh, I'm just going to take that out now that's it unlocked um, I'll show you the FC3 cutters so FC3 cutters they're all 6 mil and they have um, a flat ground into them um, so, but the, although I, I managed to get a box of these for, t for £10, which was very good, but now they're about £10 each. So I don't really want to be using those um, because when you're learning uh, CNC, you tend to break a lot of cutters. So what I've got is these, I've got a packet of 30 degree engraving bits, which are pretty cheap less than a tenner and I've also got a, a packet of um, these which are engraving bits and um, if I can do it the wrong way around never mind um, so if you don't know what the engraving bits look like they're um, called a D bit because the um, the profile of this section is a D shape it's basically ground to halfway And then the cutting edge, you can just about see it is, is here. So um, I only want to make sort of fairly small stuff. So I'd like to try using these um, much more affordable cutters. Uh, these, these um, the cheap ones all come with a one eighth shank. So what I basically need is um, to make an adapter that looks like an FC3 cutter at one end. Uh, and then has a hole through that's one eighth, quite quite accurately bored, um, that will just clamp very slightly on this cutter, so it um, it will it will hold in place. So I think um, yeah, so I've got a fair idea of what I'm going to do. So uh, I'll, I'll draw it up, and then we'll I'll bring you back so we can machine it. So this is what I've come up with. Um, so from, from here to here is sort of a, a replica of the FC3 and we've got the, the cutter there. Where, where I've got this um, black line is, is, is basically where, where the, um, is how far it goes into the, the, the existing spindle. So that from here onwards is inside the spindle and I've put a a slightly larger sleeve on the outside just to stop it going all the way into the spindle. Um, so the grub the grub screw is going to go about here um, and will apply pressure so I've got a slit going up this section so we need to go at least nearly to nearly up to the larger section so that it's able to clamp it. 
it shouldn't need too much clamping because this bore I've got a bore here which will be reamed one eighth um, and the hole from this flange will be 15 which is enough to get these larger larger um, end mills in which are again quite reasonably priced I hadn't appreciated that the end mills are quite a lot longer than the engraving bits but I'd like to use both so um, I think with this design there's enough space for both and uh, we should be able to clamp the, the, the engraving bit fairly easily um, yeah so I think I'll probably make it out of brass because it's nice to nice to machine uh, let's get over let's find some stock and then uh, we'll get you over to the lathe so I've moved um, the part over to the uh, milling table now I've got it set up, I've kept it in the collet chuck um, because I, once I've cut it off I won't really be able to hold it so I've got a 0.4mm um, slitting saw uh, I might have to move it to the side slightly so I can get the actual depth that I need but we'll, uh, we'll get to that when we get to it I guess <laughs> I forgot to press record, but I've um, I've just done the the clamping flat. I've, I've um, machined it at one mil depth, and which doesn't give me much clearance to the actual um, cutters. You know, once I've bored through, so that's going to be about um, 0.4 mil. So I don't really want to go any deeper than that. It should be 1.2 mil depth, but I think uh, I think that's getting a bit close to the bone isn't it so we'll um we'll leave that for now uh i need to put this into a six mil collet and we'll turn it round and bore it through Okay, so we've gone in with the eighth inch reamer there and we've got a really lovely result. So that's the finished article. I've got pretty close to where I wanted to be. What I actually wanted was for basically these to be of a similar length. But um, I think that'll, that's, that's good enough. It's close enough. Um, that'll still be way, way... Um, That'll still reach the bed. So um, let's try and uh, fit it, shall we, and see how we get on. I think that's fairly, uh, fairly rigid. So let's, uh, let's give it a bit of a test, shall we? So if you press the view button, it will then go to the zero zero position. Maybe I have to put the cover on. There we go. So um, I'll just take the cover off so we can, ah, <laughs> that's annoying. So if you hold the down button, the motor will start running and eventually it starts to move down. So, so that's as close as I really want to go. We've got about five mil of travel left there. 
so that's plenty close enough um, so the next thing I'll do is I'll put the engraving bit in and see uh, see how close that is and then we come with the uh, engraving bit Still got about five mil there. I could probably push the engraving bit a bit further into the adapter. The run out doesn't look too bad. So um, I think I'll leave it there. I'm quite pleased with uh, how that looks. Um, I hope you found that interesting. Um, like, share and subscribe. Uh, please leave a comment. Always interested to hear on what you have to say. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.